Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I'm setting up a spindle package for a client. And I found, like many of you have found, that certain issues arise in user's manuals. This one particularly is the HY. And of course, as we come over here, one of the biggest questions I've been asked and many of you have encountered is, even though you've set your spindle according to the settings that I've given on previous videos, you notice that you're not getting and achieving a full 400 hertz rating on your spindle, which means your spindle will not run at 24,000 RPM. Now, how do we correct that the easiest way? Well, let me tell you what I found. PD070 analog input. This is what attaches to your pot and make sure, when I'm saying pot, potentiometer, make sure that your analog voltage is going to be correct from zero, zero volts representing zero RPM and 10 volts representing 100% uh, RPM, also known as 24,000 for this particular spindle. You could see that zero is supposed to represent that and one is supposed to represent zero to five volts. Now let me show you what happens and this is what most of you encounter. If we go to program and we go to PD, let's say, make sure we're in there. There we go. Shift. Set. I've got it on one. If I go to zero, which is what these VFDs typically come as program stock, you can see right now it's asking me to manipulate programming again. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit run. And right now we've just set it to zero. And the manual represents zero right here, factory settings zero. It should represent zero to 10 volts, which would give you, in theory, 100% of the 400 hertz rating, meaning you would go from zero volts or zero RPM to 400 hertz in theory. Let's see what actually happens. Okay, now we're seeing our rotation, which is at RPM at 12,000, which means we're running half. And that's what most of you guys encounter. If we go over here and once again, go to shift, we're noticing that our Hertz is at 200. Once again, representing we're at half. So what's the problem? This is the question I get asked. Here's the problem. I'm gonna turn her off. We'll go back to shift, or actually no, we'll stay on Hertz. The manual is backwards. So zero to 10 volts is represented by one and not zero. So it's completely backwards. Let me show you what I mean. If we go in here again, we go to program, we go to PDO 70 and I go set and now I'm going to one set. Now we've programmed it. In theory, we should be at zero to five volts. Watch what happens. Click run, we're on Hertz. All of a sudden magic. There you go. Let's check it even further. We'll go over to our rotational RPM. 24,000, you're now represented correctly. So what did we just learn, guys? The manual is backwards. This manual is representing, once again, zero to 10 volts at zero. That is incorrect at the factory setting. You need to put it on number one. And it's stating that one is zero to five volts. And that would represent half, which is actually backwards. So zero setting, factory setting, actually represents zero to five volts. And one, if we key in one, represents actually zero to 10 volts, also known as zero RPM to 100 RP, uh, percent RPM, also known as 400 Hertz. So you guys just learned how to correct if your spindle is not hitting the correct number as far as its maximum RPM, AKA maximum Hertz rate. Hey guys, jump over to eDealers Direct Automation and check out my eBay store for the components used to make what you see in this video, as well as many others that you may not even realize you need. Of course, I'm always there. If you have questions, message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And of course I do do custom engineering as well as consultations. Thank you for watching this video and your support. Take care. All right, guys, in this portion of the video, I want to cover the HY default settings to get your VFD 
operating properly to whatever spindle you're working with. Here is the general VFD uh, programming parameters for your spindle. PD013 will reset your VFD to default settings. So I always recommend doing that mainly because we don't know what has actually happened to that VFD in transit. Anything can happen. Typically, I hate to tell everybody out there, but if you're purchasing on Amazon, many of you already realize a lot of Amazon returns are actually being resold. And I don't agree with that. Many of you don't agree with that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And on top of that, if an end user did manipulate those settings, it could of course affect you. So best practice, reset using PD13. Now, as we come down, you're gonna see the basic general settings to get the VFD to function correctly. I've covered this in previous videos. Now this is the updated version from those previous videos after i find any type of issues with the user's manual i want to give you guys an update so everybody's on the same page step one set pd005 400 step two pd004 400 step three pd003 to 400 step four set pd072 to 400 step five pd144 to 3000 that's your maximum uh, speed for your spindle and of course, as we come down here, then set the following parameters below. You got PD141. This is to set the spindle's voltage rating, which is always represented on the side of the unit. PD142, input the amps written on the side of the spindle. P, uh, PD143, um, again, we're looking at two, and that's the pole rating of the motor. PD070, this is the setting we just covered. Typically, it would be zero. And that's according to the user's manual I just showed you. However, if your spindle isn't achieving 24,000 RPM and 400 Hertz, and it's rated for it, then your user's manual may have a typo. Try putting this setting to one and see if you have joy. We just demonstrated it. Then down here, you're gonna have the correct hookup if you're gonna do VFD control as far as PWM. So keep that in mind, and if you plan on manipulating your spindle speed with Mach 3 through PWM, then change the following settings below. Other than that, you do not need to manipulate these settings, of course. Now, something else I noticed, and I want you guys to pay close attention. Right here is the HY user's manual, and I want to direct your attention to PD141 through PD144. I'm going to zoom in. What I'm going to show you is you can see we have settings here. PD-141 uh, rated motor voltage, we covered that, 142 rated motor current, PD-143 motor pole number, we've covered that, and PD-144 rated motor revolution. Now on the new HY manual I just did for that client, I noticed these were gone. All of these settings were not listed in the user's manual, yet they're still active. Meaning if you put in the programming for 141, 142, it's never changed. Something changed with the user's manual. So pay close attention. Usually if it, do, if it didn't have type, it would say reserved. And you'll see this area of the box basically empty. So if you notice that, it does not mean these settings are not active. And you can check if they're active. And it's very easy to do. You would go and type in PD-141 on the display when you go into program. And as you do that, if you notice that the, a voltage comes up, and typically it'll flash 220, or whatever the VFD's voltage rating is for whatever output it's going to have, you're gonna notice then that this setting is fully active. And you can go right down the line with 142, 143, and 144, and, and you realize that if one is active, 99.9% .9 chance they're all gonna be active. It's just something with the user's manual. So pay close attention. If this occurs and I catch it, I'm a vendor that believes in updating the information so guys don't struggle. That to me is logical. I don't know why no one else has caught this, but again, it's something I just caught and therefore I'm updating. It will definitively, as far as that PD070 setting, where we're supposed to be able to use the pot and it's supposed to hit, once again, uh, zero to 10 volts. Now we know how to troubleshoot that. And we also know that just switching that setting from zero to one, as we just demonstrated, will bring that spindle to operating at 400 Hertz, AKA 24,000 RPM. So again, pay close attention. 
there should never be a deviation in a user's manual. Unfortunately, it happens to a lot of companies. I, I don't blame it because they're overseas. I blame it because, again, it's a level of detail that needs to be really looked at before it leaves a factory. So now that you know it exists, you know what to check your units for. And if you encounter this problem, you guys are on the right track. Thank you again for your support.